talk us through the, the unique dynamics of this race. I mean, how do you even explain how unusual this all is? Uh, unusual it is, but maybe the most unusual thing about it is, uh, and this is not a partisan comment, but if you look at the two front runners on the Republican side at the moment, Donald Trump and, and Ron DeSantis, and especially the dominant front runner, Donald Trump, you know, they have told you that if you elect them, there's going to be an authoritarian government in this country. Donald Trump has said that he would destroy the civil service if he can do that. He will destroy an independent Department of Justice and FBI, which means that the rule of law is out the window, and that he will run a government of retribution. That's about as close to the textbook definition of fascism as I've ever seen. He is the front runner of one of our two great parties. We can look in all of American history, uh, two centuries plus, you know, we've had all sorts of people run for president and as nominees of major, major parties, but there was never one who told you that if you elect him, he wants to institute an authoritarian government that's going to restrict your rights. How about one that praise someone like Korean dictator Kim Jong-un? Uh, well, uh, authoritarians like to praise other authoritarians, so it should not surprise us. Uh, I tweeted the other day, I shouldn't joke about something this serious. I said, you know, who's going to be congratulated next? Stalin, who, you know, presided, as you know, over deaths of more than 10 million people, uh, also from hunger, by the way, in some cases. Uh, this is what we're reduced to. And I think for us to look at this as in any way normal, this is totally out of the American experience. And if Donald Trump is elected next year and if he carries through on what he is now threatening, you know, compared to what he might want to do that he's not telling us, this could be a very different country two years from now. And I should clarify, I said Korean dictator, North Korean dictator. Michael, I want you to take a listen to sound bites, two very different speeches. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. The woke mind virus represents a war on the truth, so we will wage a war on the woke. We will fight the woke in education. We will fight the woke in the corporations. We will fight the woke in the halls of Congress. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Michael, who wore it better? Winston Churchill, who wrote those words and was talking about fighting fascism, not abetting it. He'd be disgusted if he heard his, his words abused uh, this way by the number two front runner on the Republican side. And the other thing, Alicia, you know, what is this word woke? Well, the word woke was used by black parents in the early 20th century to warn their children when they went out of the house, be woke, be careful, be alert, make sure that you don't get lynched or beaten up or arrested falsely. And since that time, at least according to the best dictionaries, woke means uh, the state of being alert to injustice, prejudice, racial or social discrimination. So what Ron DeSantis and others are saying, they're for discrimination, they're for injustice. Listen to what the, these people are saying. They're telling you what kind of America we will have if they're elected.